We start this Friday at 10 o'clock with big breaking news. Three days after election night, two of Arizona's most watched races have now been called. Several counties releasing new ballot totals, and we want to take a look at those results. Starting first with the U.S. Senate race, we've got 83% of the votes reporting, and we've got Mark Kelly as the projected winner there with 51.8%. Next, we move on to the race for Secretary of State between Democrat Adrian Fontes and Republican Mark Fincham. This race also 83 percent re reported, uh, and it appears that Adrian Fontes will win with 53, nearly 53 percent of the vote. And let's take a look at that uh, hotly contested race for governor. It's showing 50.7 percent in favor of Katie Hobbs, Republican Carrie Lake at 49.3 percent at this hour. Meanwhile, in the race for Arizona Attorney General Chris May is still holding on to a very slim lead at just over 50 percent, up by 19,000 votes on her Republican challenger Abe Hamaday, who's sitting at just under 50 percent. And in the race for Maricopa County attorney, we have Rachel Mitchell at 51.8% over Julie Gunnigal at 48.2% this evening. And for the race for Arizona Superintendent Kathy Hoffman, the Democrat, at 50%. Tom Horn just under that as well. She is now leading that race as well. Meanwhile, Team 12 political insider Bram Resnick joining us live tonight with more context on these latest developments. Yeah. Very good night for Democrats. Very good night. It was supposed to be the year of the Republican red wave, but so far during these midterms, Arizona Democrats have turned it back in historic fashion. Democrat Mark Kelly had been re was, has been reelected to a full six-year term as senator after defeating Republican Blake Masters. He's a Trump-endorsed first-time candidate and protege of tech billionaire Peter Thiel. Now, Kelly's victory puts Democrats one step closer to retaining control of the U.S. Senate. The former astronaut succeeded despite President Joe Biden's low approval ratings in Arizona and Democrats getting the blame for voters' economic worries. And almost improbably, once solidly red Arizona has now elected a Democratic U.S. Senator three times in the last four years, starting with Kirsten Sinema in 2018. Adrian Fontes' victory as Secretary of State is significant in three ways. He defeated State Representative Mark Fincham, another Trump-endorsed candidate, and won the country's most relentless promoters of the lie that the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump. Fontes will, will also be called upon as Secretary of State to certify the 2024 presidential election. There were questions about whether Fincham would do that if the Republican nominee lost. And on a more personal level, Fontes will be the first Latino in 48 years elected to one of Arizona's executive offices and only the second in state history. Here's what Fontes had to say just minutes ago. I'm excited to get to work to make sure we restore the confidence that unfortunately has been lost in systems that are perfectly legitimate, perfectly well run, yeah, bumps and bruises here and there, but at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Now, those two statewide races were called tonight shortly after Maricopa County's ballot drop helped pad all the Democrat, Democratic candidates' leads. But the victory margins could shrink in coming days as the counties release more election results. Don't be surprised by that. The races for governor, attorney general, and school superintendent all remain very competitive and far too close to call. I want to note Donald Trump posted minutes ago on social media that the election was stolen from Blake Masters and Trump wants a do-over. Meantime, Senator Kelly said tonight he plans to give a victory speech to supporters Saturday morning in Phoenix. Again, a reminder, this race is still not over. Those three statewide offices could have a few days to go. Yeah. yeah, and they've been they've been tight from the jump. So we appreciate your continued analysis. And as you said, the election far from over. Bram, thank you so much. Maricopa County has more than 265,000 ballots uh, left to count. That's right. Team 12's Bianca Bono live at the Maricopa County Tabulation Center. Bianca, we do understand there has been some mounting pressure from the GOP party tonight. Bring us up to date. 
Yeah, no question about it. The RNC and the Republican Party of Arizona has, quote, demanded around-the-clock ballot processing here in Maricopa County. But Chairman Bill Gates fired back, calling it a political stunt, noting folks here are already clocking up to 18-hour shifts per day, saying they're not going to be distracted by that. And I want you to take a look at a graph provided by Maricopa County today that really breaks down the number of days that it took to finish the count in previous elections from 2006 to 2020. Take a look. You could see 12, 17, 15. In 2020, it took 10 days. Just to reiterate the message that this is to be expected based on our state laws. Tonight, the county dropped nearly 75,000 ballots, and the majority of these were those early ballots dropped off on Election Day. It also consisted of the remaining early ballots before Election Day and the majority of those box number three ballots. Chairman Gates again reinforced the fact that the entire process is bipartisan with Republicans and Democrats sitting together. And by the way, he said most of them are enjoying each other's company. Take a listen. It's an exciting time. Uh, people are very anxious to get the results, but these people are committed to moving this process through. But while they're doing it, they're, they might be making a new friend, meeting someone from across the aisle, which I think we need a little bit more of in this country right now. And as the county continues to count the remaining 265 to 275,000 ballots, Republican Wendy Rogers is promoting what she's calling a rise up rally. It's scheduled to take place right outside of this very building tomorrow at noon. For now, we're live in Phoenix. Bianca Bono, 12 News.